Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, it took me a minute. I had to log out and log back in. The first of the year, this this Zoom link is going to change, so it's going to be the same one as we have all the other times because this one ends up being an issue. So, how's everybody? How was your Friday? I did thirty four dials. Awesome, and, and I talked. I talked to five people, but so it wasn't you know not perfect, but I did it. Okay, but how did the five conversations go? Oh, they weren't interested, and two of them were hostile. Leave okay. me alone. Which is, you know, that's that's all part of it. That's so all the, one, the ones that weren't interested, what were they not interested in? They were um they were not interested in selling their house. Um I tried to keep going like because I my number one goal, I mean I guess to see if they're interested, but is to get them on the monthly neighborhood nurture. And like two people. I was like, I'm following up on a letter I sent you. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I said, well, you know, I'm a realtor with Keller Williams. And they're like, oh, we don't want to sell our house. Click. That was two of them. And then one lady, you know, a couple of them talked and they're like, you know, it's just not, no, I don't think I'd be interested. Thanks though. You know, when I tried to say they're not interested, but then try to get them on the monthly neighborhood nurture, which, you know. So what could you change about your initial conversation, your, your lead in that would take, I don't want to sell my house off the table. Uh, I'm not sure. Cause I start with, I'm following up on a letter I sent you a few weeks ago. It was on yellow paper. Okay. And they're like, I don't, they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm what like, about, well, in an ideal then world, I was, what would it take for you to sell your house? Yeah. Okay. Or it could be, are you interested in finding out what your home is worth in this market? Mm, okay. That's good. Or. Oh, okay. I understand you don't want to sell your house. Do you know anybody in the area? Because my clients really love the area. Yeah, that's good. You can also ask them who they hate in the neighborhood that they'd like to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super like open to that. Too. I'm super open to a vengeful listing. <laughs> <laughs> So yesterday, this is a good, we'll, we'll continue on here in a minute, but yesterday I have so much to share from yesterday that what I had planned for today is probably not going to happen. But one of the things from, or from yesterday and the day before yesterday, from yesterday, there is a book. So when you're um, putting together your um, growth plan for 2022, does everybody know what your growth plan? I know we've been working on GPS and 411 and you're, and your systems around your lead generation, but does is, is everybody know what your growth plan is for 2022? No, nobody has. So your growth plan is what you wanna do to grow personally and professionally, right, for 2022. These could be, um, my growth plan is to attend family reunion in February, okay? Um, on my growth plan now is to read this book I'm gonna tell you about here in a little bit. On my growth plan is to read the MREA two times next year. Um, so I'll get I'll get close to the 13 that Gary says I have to read it. So I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Um, but but it's last year, my growth plan this year, I read the 12 week, uh, the 12 week uh, year three times because I wanted to make sure. So for me, I have to, I'm, I'm slow. So I have to read things several times because every time I read it, I get some more out of it, right? If I read it once, and it said a lot to me Then I want to make sure I read it a couple more times. Anyway, so your growth plan, in the, it's in your PC library in the goal setting. There's a sheet, but it's really just about what am I going to do every month of the year, both professionally and personally to, to improve, to get better, to, to move my, my business forward, myself forward. So when you're looking at your growth plan, this is a book to consider, and I'm going to share my screen. This was so fascinating to me yesterday. We spent a lot of time on this yesterday with the leadership, and I wanted to share. So it's called Jab, 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 Right Hook, and it's not about boxing. I know that's deceiving. It seems like it would be, but it's really about what I wrote down from that yesterday is give, 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 ask. Okay, give, 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 ask. If we start off with ask, they say, no, you're done. But if we give, 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 and then we ask, right? Is the, or is, is the ask more receptive? So Joni, with that thought in mind, give, mm -hmm. give, give, ask. 
okay, what could change about your approach to your golden letters? Very much. Um, have you, would you, can I offer you what your value of your home is right now? Yes. So you, you know what's been going on in the market? It's been crazy. Surely you've heard your neighbors have maybe sold their home and it was for a surprising amount. Would you just like to know how much equity you have in your home? Because mm -hmm. if you would, I'd love to help you with that. Yeah. Okay. Would that be a give? What else might be a give? I know Dan, I love Dan's give. Is there anybody in the neighborhood you really would like to get rid of? Because I would love to call them and see if I could sell their house. <laughs> I mean, you know, with the right person, like if you guys got my dad on the phone and, and he would want to banter with you, that would be a great, that would be, a, that would be, that would be memorable. It'd be fun. You know, it's not that much different than my, um, would you like to choose your new neighbors? Right. If you're calling around to open house, my script for that was, Hey, I am, I don't know if you realize your neighbor down the street has their house for sale. And I just had a quick question for you. Would you like to choose your new neighbors? And there's always a big pause because they're processing that. And then they say, yeah, how's that work? <laughs> you know? And then I say, well, I'm having an open house this weekend. And so all your friends and family that you would like to have live in the neighborhood, you can invite them and anybody you wouldn't want, don't invite them. <laughs> so that same, same thing, Get give, give, give. So what's something else you might be able to give around the golden letters? Uh... The, the, neighborhood nurture is, the neighborhood nurture is a give it's a give as long as you frame it as one yeah you have in order for it to be a give what does the other person need to feel like it is it's giving them information and power it has to be valuable to them right it has to have value so if we say i have something really awesome i'd like to share with you it's going to help you know exactly what's going on on your market let me ask you a question. Have you ever pulled in your neighborhood and saw a for sale sign in the yard? What would you, what was the first thing you wondered? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, you got to make it feel valuable to them. Okay. So think about that when you're making your calls database, let's talk about database for a minute with give, 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 ask. When you're making your sphere calls, what could be the gives? A like value in the home? What do you, is that what you mean? Same thing. How, it could be the equity of their home. Same thing you're offering to your golden letters could definitely be gives to your database. Exactly. Could also be an invite to something, right? Um, when we have shred day again, right? You invite them to come shred their documents. That's a give, right? Um, How about gratitude? Gratitude. Yes. Call to wish him a happy Thanksgiving. That's a give, isn't it? That's warm and fuzzy. Is yeah. sending a birthday card a give? Yeah. Just Is letting them know you're thinking of them. Yeah. Your handwritten yeah. notes, Joni. Aren't yeah. those gives? Yeah. You put in just a little bit of love in each one of them. Yeah. That's definitely a give, right? So think about that when you're when you're when you're when you're putting together your systems that we've been talking around around your lead generation. Thank you, Joni, because you lead this right into what I wanted. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring yeah. back to you guys was this concept of give, 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 ask. I, I'm, I'm, I think we do it naturally, but to be intentional about it, you know, to understand that give, 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 ask, I think is important. And I would, I'm the, I'm going to probably change the way I make my calls and I'm going to count my gives. I'm going to make sure that I have them in there. When I put my systems together around my calls and my lead generation, I'm going to think, do I have all my gives in there? Have I given enough? Do I have, have I earned the right to ask for a referral or for business? And one of the things we are going to talk about today, which we last week, we decided we were going to talk about. And I, and I have, I have my little, I have my little note right here from last Saturday. So I promise we're going to talk about allied resources and vendors that would definitely, if you put together a vendor book, which we're going to talk about, uh, is that not a give if you shared that with people? Is your quarterly newsletter, if you use the, the zine in designs four times a year, there's lots of great stuff in there. If you guys haven't looked at the, the, hol the holiday one, the fourth quarter one, you got to look at it. It's amazing. Yes, Armand. What's it called? The zine. The zine. zine. It's, in okay. your, it's in your designs. It's the quarterly magazine. 
I'm trying to load. I don't know if it's just such a big file, it wouldn't open. I don't know. I saw people this week this week that have put it into, and Jessica Riley can do this for you, put it into a flip. Have you ever gotten one of those emails where instead of it opening up as a PDF that you have to scroll through, scroll through, scroll through, it comes up like a magazine and you just push the arrow button and it just opens. It, it actually has that feeling of a, of a page turn. Jessica can do that for you, or she can show you how to do it. You know, that everything that she does, she's willing to do it for you, do it with you, right? So then you can do it in the future on your own. Um, but she can put it together that way. But it might be, it might be, hang on, Shelly, Melissa, it might be a, um, it, it might be a computer issue, like a technology issue. Maybe if you go into the office and use one of the computers there. Sure, yeah. Okay, awesome. Yes, ma'am, Shelly. I just wanted to say um, something that my team does when we have closings for buyers, we make a binder and we have the front page as a picture of the house and, you know, congratulations, Carla Higgins, um, and then the address. And then inside we have all the closing documents and they're printed out in um, plastic pages so that they always have everything they've signed. And then at the back is a um, section of vendors and there's a section to put business cards in of people that you've done business with. So we give that to them to keep everything straight for them, but they really, it's gone over really, really well. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Easy to do. Yeah. Well, and, it's, and it becomes a system. So Shelly, yes. what I hear from you is it's a system, which she start yes. off with every time. Every single time. Every single time. Every buyer. So if, if you do it every time and you don't have an admin right now, Shelly has an admin, but if you don't have an admin, if every time you do it, as soon as they, as soon as they go under contract, would you just start it? Right, Joni? You know, yeah. this is a Joni, this is, a, this is very much a Joni moment. Yes, very much <laughs> so. Even if together a binder and forms that they I sign. Know. Even if it's a matter of having something like this, like maybe it doesn't have to be all in, um, you know, laminated pages. I mean, it doesn't have to be that way. You could get something like this right? And you could put all of their documents in it and you could just have one that had their name on it and you just had it in your, you know, your pending pile. And every time there was a document, you printed it and put it in there for them, right? So you, you, you could think of different ways to do that that would make that, that super easy for them. For those of you that have had closing, start this now. Here's a big give for you. In January, they're going to start pulling their tax, the, your buyers and your sellers, they're going to start pulling their tax information together. And one of the things their accountant or whoever's going to need is the closing statement, right? Don't make them go look for it. Pull them down, get an email ready in January. Say, hey, I thought you probably need this as you're getting ready for your taxes. Just wanted to send it to you. For those of you in Indiana, I don't know what the timeline is in Ohio, but for those of you in Indiana, if you've had a buyer, they have until the end of the year to make sure that their homestead exemption was filed and to file their mortgage exemption. So this is a really good time of the year just to check back in. How's everything going with the house? I wanted to make sure that you double checked that the title company sent your homestead exemption and that it actually didn't get lost in the mail somewhere, right? Because you don't want your taxes to go from 1% to 2%, right? Don't want to double our taxes. And then also make sure you got your mortgage exemption filed because they might've forgotten, right? So there's a give. What other kind of gives? Does anybody have um, people in your um, sphere that have uh, important, important whys in their life? Maybe they participate in a um, uh, not for profit or a fundraiser or something. Could you give a little to their organization and say, Hey, you know what? I had a, I had a, I had a good year this year and I wanted to share. And so what, what, what is important to you? Or I know this is important to you. And how can I give to that organization? You know, it doesn't have to be a big give. Joni, you do tell everybody you do, um, Oh, journey bags. Um, I am a group of, we're in uh, just volunteer group in Hancock County and we collect clothes and toiletries and new underwear and socks for kids in foster care. 
or anybody, our first goal is to any child in foster care who needs, a, and we just give them a bag and it's got a week's worth of clothes and toiletries in it. So their DCS worker can just swing by. There's one lady who's the central uh, pickup spot. People, the DCS worker can swing by and pick up the bag on her way to, with the child to take them to their foster home. And then once we, once we know we have foster children taken care of, then we are open to anybody in Hancock County who asks. So Joni, if you, if there was a lender who found out that this was a big thing for you and they called you up and they said, Hey, we know that you do this. And I wanted to know what can we do to help you with that? Yeah. Who is the first lender that you're going to think of every time you send a buyer to get pre-approved? Them, that lender. Okay. So do you want to be that realtor for the people in your sphere? Yeah, very much so. Who, so when you're calling your database and you're having the Ford conversation and you're talking about dreams, could you also talk about passions? Is there anything you're passionate about? Like anything, like it could be your kid's sports, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you guys have people in your sphere who have kids in sports and they look for what sponsorships they look for sales? How about uh, scouts, Jessica? Right. If a lender called you and said, hey, I know your your children are in scouts and I wanted to order popcorn. Now, the next time you have a buyer, are you going to think of them to send them to that lender? Maybe she's listening this morning and not talking. But it's true. Right. If we if we do something that matters to somebody else, then they're going to think of us first. Right. Because it's all about them. Right. Isn't that true? So think about give, 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 ask. And when you're asking, before you ask, think, did I give? Because it could all happen in the same conversation, right? I mean, could you in a conversation, could you give, give, maybe give, 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 whatever that looks like. Could you give, 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 and ask? Is just asking somebody how they're doing, is that giving? Yeah, yeah. it's care. Yeah, you're giving care. If you ask about their, if you do Ford, if you ask about their family, their job, right? The recreation, what are they doing for the holidays? Did you give a lot? You give your time listening to what they had to say? Yeah. Um, today, we're giving sort of um, three of our baseball teammates are playing on the same basketball team. So I reach out to their parents and we're going to go watch them play basketball um, to help build our friendship and relationship and just to support them. Oh, that's a great idea. That's, that's great. Yeah, plus, that's you know, awesome. we miss and them. There's, and there's a word there. There's a word there that if you tie this back, the give, give, give is just the relationship piece, right? Mm -hmm. If you start off with the ask. So, Joni, if I go back to the golden letters, mm -hmm. whether it was your intention or not, when they said, no, I don't want to sell that, my house, do you think they felt like they got any give, give, give? No. They just thought you were asking and they were done with it, right? right. Asking and done with it. All right, so let's talk about those of you that call for sale by owners. How could you turn this give, 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 ask into setting yourself different apart from what people do with for sale by owners or expires? Show your care and uh, you're trying to get them the uh, uh, actual sale price at first before you hit them with the whammy, but uh, at any rate, uh, you're giving in reference to that. You can give them a market uh, value. Uh, you can take a bag of candy. You can ask what the most important thing is for them. I'm thinking Armand, Armand and I have had this conversation a couple of times. Well, you know what? I know you're selling your house on your own. And um, what I wanted to ask you is, do you need any help with where you're going to be moving to? Right, because they're focused on selling their house and what's everybody that's calling them talking to them about? How can Listen. I lease your house? All the reasons why you shouldn't be selling your house on your own. Right. Well, what if I just back off from that altogether and I lead with, you know, I, and let, let me just take this off the table because you know how I love that. So what if my script was something like, um, I know you're getting a call from a lot of realtors and they're either telling you that they have buyers and they don't, or they're just trying to flat out list your house. And I, I don't wanna ask you either of those things. So what I wanted to ask you is, where are you gonna be moving to? And do you need any help with that, right? Because I would love to help you with that. And I know you wanna sell without paying a commission, but I wanna make sure you understand that if you work with a buyer's agent, you don't have to worry about paying a commission because the seller's gonna pay it for you. 
Okay. So how can I help you? Now, did I give, I gave a little information, right? And I gave an offer. Uh, also those of you that are doing for sale by owners and you're offering to do open houses for them, right? Start off with, I'm not just calling to tell you I have buyers and I don't really, because I want to get in and see if I can list your house. Like, let's just be honest. That's what's happening. I'm not doing that. Instead, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see if you're having a hard time getting buyers to your house, could I have an open house for you? While I can't get you in the multiple listing service, I can let everybody at Keller Williams know that you have this house for sale because I could have an open house for you and I could advertise that. Right? So we're, we're giving a give. Um, you could also uh, give knowledge, like they might not know that they need the seller's disclosures and the legal documents. Like, do you know about those? I can help you print those out and go over them with you. Yeah. Do you have a seller's disclosure ready? If you don't, just give it to them, right? I mean, it's what's the what's the harm? It's a state form. They can get it online, right? So just give it to them. Give give it give it. Be 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 helpful. Right. And then when they, when, then when they can, if you're the one that says this to them and you offer to help them, even if they don't want your help, they they're moving in with their, they're getting married and they're moving in with somebody they're not buying. Okay. But you were the one that offered to help them. And then you're just going to keep checking in and say, just was checking in to see how things are going. Is there anything I can help you with? Right. When they get tired of having their house on the market and they can't get it sold, who are they going to think more kindly of you or the one that called and hit them with the ass to begin with? Right. The other thing that we did yesterday, I want to go back to how everybody was doing. But I got, see, I was so excited. This is what happens. This is the first time we got back together and it was so cool. And this mega panel, when you see, they're going to do four of them next year. And when you see, and they're going to rotate. So it's not always going to be in Dayton. When you see this come up, it, I don't rem, I don't know what, it was like less than a hundred dollars. But when you see this opportunity, consider it putting that in your growth plan like to attend one of these panels because the agents just get up. It's like mega camp, but smaller because it's just on a regional basis and it's very in, intimate and personal and you get to ask questions and they share so much of what works for them. And it was so cool. Okay. Another one um, down this line is take a piece of paper. Well, we're going to do this exercise in a minute. So let's see how everybody's doing. We're going to talk about recruit. We're going to talk about um, marketing versus attracting. Okay, marketing versus attracting. We're going to look at that. All right, Dan, tell me how was your Friday? How was your week all in last week? You're muted. The week was not bad. I still have a few to make up. Uh, I took advantage of um, showing a house uh, on the west side and walked around and talked to a few of the neighbors. Uh, which was, uh, you know, helpful. Uh, one of them also volunteered that they'd been having some roof problems on the house that I was showing. So that was kind of <laughs> helpful. Uh, I didn't get any uh, opportunity to do, um, you know, market analysis, but I did ask and I did make sure they got my card and they knew I was part of the Homes for Heroes project, which everybody seems interested in. And uh, so, it, you know, I thought it went fairly well and you never know when something like that will come back to you. Exactly. You give. See, look at that. You were give, give, give. All right, Melissa, how about you? How was your Friday? Um, how, was your week, how did your week end for you all in? Um, I was, you know, trying to get more bold with asking people for things. I give a lot. I do. Um, anyway, so I did bring up real estate to some of the new baseball parents with the pies. Um, it didn't end up turning into a conversation, but I brought it up. But then last night, one of the ones who I've known for a year, I talked to her all about real estate. And then I even did, if you know anybody, <laughs> want to buy her, so will you please give them my information? And she's like, yeah, of course. You know, and I was just so proud of myself because I'm like working up that nerve. So I'm getting better. <laughs> so that I was love that. Do you, do you feel good when you help other people? Yeah, I do. So do you think that when you ask other people to help you that it makes them feel good? Yes. Yeah. So if you don't ask them, what are you robbing them of? Feeling good. The Thank opportunity you. to feel good. Absolutely. It's selfish not to ask for help, isn't it? Yeah. And um, my people are going to 
write the offer that is going to get accepted on that land. We're just waiting on one thing. And they were firm on their price, so we're going to have to go up to their price, but they're going to do it. So awesome. I should, it better, I need to get it in this year, but it's a cash offer. So I, I love okay. it. I love it. Okay. All right, Champelle, did you get your offer off? No, I sent it over to the uh, buyer, um, but so she can sign it, but she's not going to do it. She doesn't want the interest rate. Oh, okay. Can she look for a different lender to see if she can get a better interest rate? Yeah, we're already doing that. No, well, very good. All right. Well, other than that, you, you, you definitely got practice in writing a purchase agreement, which is always good. Everybody will tell you the very first one is the one that's the most challenging, right? It uh, was hectic to say the least. It is. But I, they get much easier, don't they, guys? Yes. So other than that, how was your week? How was your week? How did it end? Um, it ended um, late. I, I, I was Friday's usually... Thursday and Friday is my day to work my other job. So I had to push those clients back so I could run to the office to get this um, perch, um, the purchase agreement going. So um, I worked extra late. Uh, clients had to wait for me to get to the salon to do their hair. And it was just hectic going back and forth and trying to work and talking to the, um, the uh, lender and the buyer and then the agent didn't stop responding to me <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was hectic but it, it was I was up for the challenge I love it well hopefully she can find the lender with the rate she likes did you try Keller Mortgage no I didn't so remember everybody remember but don't forget about Keller Mortgage and why Keller Mortgage is really important is there's no lender fees so it saves the money on the front end right? And they also have very competitive rates. The other thing that's really great about Keller Mortgage, if you didn't know this, is that if the deal falls apart, they don't have to pay for the appraisal. So once they, they've got the appraisal, and if you have a lender and you get an appraisal and then the deal falls apart, either because of the appraisal or because of the inspection, um, the buyer is usually out the cost of the appraisal. But with Keller Mortgage and First Merchants, they also do that. The only two lenders I know that do that, then they, they, you don't have to, the buyer doesn't have to pay for the, uh, the appraisal, which is very cool. Okay. Well, let's see. Lau, is it Lau? How do you say, it? what, what, what do you go by? Oh, uh, yeah. Cool. Lau. Lau. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You want to introduce yourself to everyone? Uh, sure. So uh, I'm just a brand new agent saying I got a, deal going on and it's gonna be closed on uh, the end of the month. So that will be my first one. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, I have a couple um, who, a, a couple client that I'm working on, they wanna sell the house. Can uh, I got appointments set up this Sunday. So I'm not sure would that go through or not, but I'm, feel like uh, I do my best here. <laughs> can, uh, awesome. And um, as a new brand agent, I don't know much about um, all the paperwork and uh, the documents. So uh, I always need help and I'm willing to learn. So that's why I'm joining here today. What else I can find learn. <laughs> I, um, we, we love having you join us and everybody will tell you that the first, the first time you go through the documents is a little challenging and then, it, and then it gets easier, just like Sean Pell was figuring out yesterday. So welcome. Glad to have you join us. All right, Armand, how was your Friday? How was your week? You're muted. Busy by all means. All right. Uh, I, well, I had some errands in between and a problem to uh, help cure whatever you want to call it and uh, so on and so forth. I didn't get as many contacts made, but I made quite a number of uh, phone calls. I haven't counted up how many they were. <clears throat> I uh, uh, got about eight 
uh, eight new uh, command uh, leads. Uh, so that's good. Uh, oh, your Facebook ad. Awesome. Uh, uh, a couple of them are about three of them I haven't contacted, uh, been able to contact yet. But I'm pushing a little bit more now to actually uh, get a contact made. Uh, and being, I'm going to be a nuisance. I am being a nuisance enough that I, uh, my feeling is, is that you make them go away. Yeah, their... Here's the thing. Don't think of it as a nuisance. Think of it as this. They, they, they pressed a button that said they wanted more information. Right. So they asked you to reach out to them. So you're not being a nuisance. You're making sure you, you, and I, and when you, when you answer, when they answer you, finally, you say, oh my gosh, I was starting to get worried because I know you were waiting for me to call you. And I didn't want you to feel like I wasn't, I wasn't getting in touch with you. Right. Then, the, yeah. I want to also point out something that happened to me yesterday <laughs> is that I, I had made three calls, or excuse me, five calls, and had, hadn't gotten them. And the fifth uh, time that I called, I got a text back to stop uh, sending them texts. So I said, well, okay, I'll try her just one more time. I called her, and I just called her later, and I uh, this was yesterday. And uh, I was waiting on uh, the gal I date so to come over. And uh, I got a hold of this gal. Oh, yeah, but I'm not going to do it till next year. And some of the reason for their hesitation sometimes is just simply because they don't want, they're, they're not doing it now. So it's not as important to it. They still have it in mind. And she's doing it next year because of their, her credit. She And she doesn't. She has a little bit of down payment, but she didn't realize how much that it would take. Uh, so, and when I got done with the conversation, she was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I'll definitely use you when I, this oh, next good. September when the lease is up and so on and so forth. The point is that five phone calls and I got a stop on the text. Wouldn't you feel like giving up? I did. So, but you did the persistence there. To Do you guys remember what our old over. coach said about the about no? Yeah, we take we take no as N O, right? But oftentimes, what no means is K N O W, right? They need to know something. So Armand, if she's worried about her down payment, make sure you let right. her know that there are no down payment options, right? Um, right. Think think now back to the give 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 right? What can I give, give, give before I ask again? And that's really important. The other thing I was thinking, Armand, this is really great messaging. Like if you have called several times and you have texted several times and they haven't got back to you, you could say, you know what? I know that you were looking for more information and I would really like to give that to you. And even if you're not looking to buy in the next six months, or a year, I'd still love to give you the information so that you can be ready when you can have everything ready when you're ready, right? So you can change, just, right. you know, preempt it. Preempt it. Awesome. All right, Armand, and I know you ran into a situation yesterday because you texted me and I apologize that I wasn't able to get back to you, but you ran into a, an issue yesterday with where Mojo, once you scrubbed against the DNC, you couldn't get any phone numbers. Is that correct for your open well, house? Well, I got, I got five. And the recommendation is, is that you do uh, 10, 10, 20s or uh, 10 on the left side of the house, 10 on the right side of the house okay, and whatever across the, the way you do 20. And of course, I have only a couple of times ever done that many. But the point is, the more you do, the more the chances that you get something back. So why are you only... I ran into the same problem and I found out that the person before me had set the code to only homes that have been owned for 10 years or more. And when I went back and changed it, it came up. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention is that also there's a place where it says, um, so if, if you guys are overlapping, so let's say that Armand, let's say that Annie pulled the list. She's doing an open house too. Okay. 
Let's say that she or she had she called because she wanted to say, hey, I listed a house, right? And she's using Mojo as well. Let me let me log into Mojo real quick and, and show you this. Because I this is I wanted to make sure that this wasn't an issue yesterday. And I unfortunately just couldn't get to it because I didn't have being away from my little space right here was very challenging for me. Um let me log in. And allow this so you know in productivity coaching this is one of the benefits of productivity coaching is having access to this this tool so you wouldn't necessarily have access to this i'm welcome to have you join us and then you will and it's logging in okay so in mojo when you search and this would be really easy because i can just search my house because i've done it before so i'm going to go to data and dialer and i'm going to do a neighborhood search then i'm going to search around my address Okay, and I'm going to draw the, the neighborhood that I want, a freeform plot. Okay, so here's, here's my neighborhood that I want, okay? Now, when I go down here, I'm going to, so first of all, it says that there's 79 total searches here, and then it, when it goes against the do not call list, that leaves me with 20, uh, 28's coming out. So it leaves me with 51. Then when I hit import and I said, I understand right here, you see where it says, keep old, keep new, keep old and new on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. So what, what's happening here is that, that there is contacts that already exist in a list that somebody has pulled here this is my neighborhood and i do this for demo so it's probably me and i probably went just a little bit further this time so i got some that i hadn't already downloaded in a sample but you'd want to make sure you keep old and new okay and it's not a problem if you know if joni pulled a list and three you know and three weeks later dan's doing an open house in the same neighborhood and he pulls a list it's okay that if you guys overlap it's not like you're calling out of each other's database or whatever these people you're just trying to get in contact with them right and so i wouldn't worry about that so make sure armand if you did that that you had keep old and new so if there was the overlap you were getting it, it would it would show up on your list even if it was on another list that had already been pulled at some point in time you're gonna find that in popular neighborhoods um or if multiple of you are doing an open house. So like Dan, if you do an open house this weekend and next weekend, Armand, you do an open house in the same neighborhood or at the same house even, you're gonna have that overlap on pulling the, the numbers. So you wanna make yeah. sure that you keep old and new. You can also clear the filters too. Yeah, you could do that too. But I just wanted to share and make sure that everybody knew that because um, yesterday when you said that, Armand, that's, that made me think about that. All right, Jay, how was your Friday? How was your week in all total? Uh, <clears throat> week in all was up and down. Um, I, had, I had one day of where I was just kind of like stuck, couldn't kind of get it together. But for the most part, I didn't make all the calls. I said I was going to make every day. But in turn, I did turn around and have not as many calls, but half, at least half conversations, at least half in conversations by talking to other people. Um, everywhere I went, passed out cars. And I had a lot of uh, meetings this week with uh, investors going through house houses fully uh, just down to the studs. So kind of looking at the picture of uh, creating space taking out space, things like that. So that was, I think it was a pretty good week for that. Uh, as far as my lead generation, it, it went pretty good. I ended up getting probably about three new clients um, and two of them have been pre-approved. So it wasn't a bad week. It was kind of, I want to say average, but it was, uh, it, it was all right. And Friday was cool too. I helped out somebody yesterday to, uh, <laughs> I helped a friend that pretty much go ahead and get a home. So that was kind of cool. Helping get a home. Uh, help them finish the end, jumping over the hurdle of getting a home. Oh, they, okay. were, they were they were kind of stuck and they needed somebody to help them. So I kind of pushed them over the edge. So hopefully they'll they'll get it be in their house by next by Thanksgiving. Okay, I love it. All right, and, built like good, and, built, and built a couple of good relationships with some realtors this week too okay that's awesome get them to libby get them on to keller williams 
All right, Shelly, how about you? So Monday and Tuesday were pretty slammed. Uh, I had a closing on Tuesday, which was my house that went under contract in March. It fell out basically because nonsense that the buyer was doing. Um, it went under contract three other times with other people. And then it came available again and my buyer scooped it back up and we finally closed on it uh, on Tuesday. So like eight months later. March. Oh my gosh, that's March. crazy. Yeah, we started them in March. So um, anyhow, so that was good. It was a long time coming, but it was great. Um, just, and then busy this week with calls. And um, so, yeah, I picked up an open house today and I picked up a showing today and um, working on uh, getting, we're, we're doing pies next week for clients. So working on getting those um, confirmed and something I've been doing with my brides. So here's what I was doing and I didn't realize I was doing it. So a lot of these brides I've met over the last year, but like we're not buds or anything, right? So they don't know who I am and I talk to them and, but I'm calling them up and I'm saying, hey, you know, I know, I know y'all getting married. I think I remember you're getting married next September because I know that's their date. Um, how are you? I just want to check in with you. Are you doing okay? Can I help you with anything? And I ask them about their vendors. So I was doing that. Um, so yay me. Um, but they're talking to me when I'm asking them, like, I just want to check on you, see how you're doing. They're like, oh, that's so nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. So uh I've got some consultations for couples. Um, so yeah, it's 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 moving along. What Shelly, do you have their wedding dates? What? Do you have their wedding dates? Yeah. But y'all, I'll tell you what, um, I called one lady and um, I was like, oh, I'm just checking in on you and Kyle, where she's like, Kyle and I just broke up a half an hour ago. And I was like, wow, I am really sorry. I mean, I felt really bad. So then I sent her, I texted her, like she was trying not to cry and I texted her and sent her a really nice note. And so that sucked. Oh, well, Shh. good to have happened now and not, and not down the road. Yes. Um, yes. I was just wondering, since you know when their wedding date is, could you do a countdown with them? Like, could you, you on some kind of drip that is a countdown? I could. Um, the only thing that worries me about that is, so I was talking to a bride sometime this week, and I had, so the reason why I know their dates is when they register uh, at the shows, they say, you know, getting married October 15th, 2022 or whatever it is. But I was talking to a bride the other day and I had down that she was getting married in September and she's like, oh yeah, we're getting married in May. And I was like, okay. So it's, I think mostly accurate. Um, sometimes it's not. And then sometimes they break up, but um, you know. Well, but let me ask you a question. If, yeah. if, they, if you said send, send something to them, while it might sting a little bit, they're getting, you're not the only one they're getting that from. Sure. So don't worry yeah. about oh, that. I'm not super worried about the breaking up part. No, but <clears throat> if you got it wrong, would they remind you? Do oh, you think yeah, they yeah. would correct you? Because is, oh, sure. is whatever the date actually is, isn't that important? That might actually be a way to get engagement with them if you had yeah. it wrong, right? Yeah. So we, we, have, we have to sometimes put the perfection thing away I, ha I have a hard time with that but absolutely I might a little bit too <laughs> all right Jessica are you just listening today I know you had set, throw something in the chat did you guys see Nakia said she had a great week she was clear to close yesterday and she's headed downtown to give to the homeless so uh she's run off on us but um to something really important uh oh and Shelby had to leave us as well so didn't get to them fast enough Jessica are you listening or are you just talk are you talking to i think she's listening all right lakeisha how was your week how was your friday or maybe lakeisha's just listening too you're muted if you're talking to me all right amber how about you okay listening not talking okay here we go um, one thing I want to make sure you guys are doing, um, um, uh, home warranties. Okay. Um, this came up 
Thursday and I thought I haven't said this in a while and I want to make sure you guys know and I had them on there is a whole workshop video where um, America's preferred home warranty came on there's other home warranty companies but that there's something really special about America's preferred first they have now I learned they have now partnered with Keller Williams across the country so they're not just um, in our region they're now across the country but something that's really important to know with them is that whether your client gets a home warranty with them or not, okay, if they have declined and actually signed the paper and somewhere down the line you have an issue um, and there is uh, your malpractice insurance gets um, engaged, they are going to cover your deductible. Whether they bought, whether your client bought the home warranty or not, as long as they know that you offered it and they mark, they signed off that they didn't want it. So I wanted to make sure we, I wanted to make sure that you guys knew where that was. So is everybody familiar with the website and how to get to it? It's aphw.com. And then um, you're going to go here for real estate professionals. Has, has everybody signed up? Does everybody have the uh, pa, uh, a uh, login? So you want to make sure you do that. I know I'm going to have things. I'm going to go here. Are you, you're seeing the screen, right? Are you guys seeing the America's Preferred screen? Okay. Log into Real Pro right here. If you don't have an account, it's going to have you set one up. Then you're going to log okay. in. Where is this link at? It's aphw.com. And I think I also, Champelle texted that to you last night. Oh. Uh, okay, so up here, you're going to find all kinds of things. There's a tutorial. Want to learn about it? There's a tutorial. There's information, the warranty information. So these are the warranties that I, that I, I have in the process. This is the one that I practiced on just to show you guys one time. That's my house and I don't really have the warrant. There's materials. Um, so you can order materials and they'll send them to you. And they're actually, um, you know, they'll just send them to you for free. You also should have them in your office. But more importantly, there is just PDFs that you can download and email. Um, there are door hangers. If you wanted to, while you were door knocking and you wanted to have a gift, right? There's a gift. You have the thing, the door knockers that you can do. Um, but there is the benefit sheet. So it's going to tell you all about that, all about you know, what it is. So you might want to put this in your buyer's packet uh, in your listing presentation. You definitely want to have it in there. Don't forget that there are um, there's seller benefits. So if your seller um, pays the extra $75 to have the seller coverage during the time that it's listed and the furnace goes out while it's listed, the warranty is going to cover the cost of repairing or replacing the furnace. So there's a lot of extra protection there. And also tell you that there's also liability protection for your seller. You guys may have heard this story from me before, but I'll tell it real quickly again. Uh, I had a, um, a sweet little lady that moved into an assisted living facility and sold her paired patio home. And um, for whatever reason, the buyers decided to take the gutters off the back of the house and then the back room flooded, surprisingly. And then she sued my client because she failed to disclose this to them. I don't, I don't know. It was, it was a whole thing. But in the middle of COVID, she got sued 90 some years old. This is very stressful for her. Uh, but America's Preferred Home Warranty paid for her legal fees because she had a warranty in place. So we had to go to small. We had to get an attorney. I had to recommend an attorney. We went to court. I testified for her. Um, and in the end she won, but she didn't have to worry about anything because she had the warranty in place. So be thinking yeah, about that's, that. That's one of their sell points is the legal fees. But not to, but here's the important thing I want you to know. Whether they, whether you, whether they decide to get the warranty or not isn't important. What's important is that you offered it and you had them sign that they didn't want it. Because as long as you've offered it and they sign that they didn't want it, if there is a problem down the road and you have a legal issue, they are going to cover the deductible on your E&O insurance. Okay, so 
big, big deal. So make sure you're, you're offering it. Um, and even in this market, you have buyers. Right now, it's really hard to expect the seller to pay for a home warranty and, and compete if you're competing in a multiple offer situation. But your buyer can still buy a home warranty. And you don't necessarily have to put it on the purchase. And I'm going to tell you why I wouldn't put it on the purchase agreement. So if my buyer is going to pay for a home warranty, they can do that whether it says it on the purchase agreement or not. The reason why I wouldn't put it on the purchase agreement is because then you get the inspection and the inspection says that the furnace is, right? It doesn't say that it's, there's something defective with it and you can't really ask for the seller to replace it, but it's, and you could ask then for the seller at that point when you're not competing, you could ask for the seller to pay for the warranty. But if you've already marked that the buyer ordered it, then they might be less likely to negotiate with you. So I would just say not to put it on the purchase agreement unless the sell, you're asking the seller to pay for it and then you can decide down the road, okay? So if you have any questions, our rep, uh, I know each of your offices, the rep for America's Preferred Home Warranties are awesome. All the reps are awesome. So you can just reach out to them and on there, it's gonna have you linked to who it is. So just make sure you have the website, you go to it, you have all the paperwork. This is where you go to order the warranty. And don't forget, you get paid $100 if you sell a warranty, um, a minimum of $100. I think there's some perks if you get the elevated um, premium packages, you get you you earn a little bit more um, for, for doing all the paperwork. So, okay, that was one thing on my list. Um, what do you see about the referrals? When you refer people to it, who do you see about that? Or if you just go ahead and do it, who do you? If you order it, it you? shows up. If it if you order it, the check comes to your market center and it's just going to show up. They're going to direct deposit it. Really? Yeah. You just as long as you've ordered it through here, as soon as the title company pays it, and it'll show you on here. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm going to have anything here that's going to be very helpful for you, but we'll see. So we go to warranty information. I'm just not being in production anymore. I'm not going to have much here. Um so this one, we'd ended up not doing a home warranty on it. Um, but um, see here where it says that over here, it says that the, so here, like if this was, with this would have actually been a home warranty that we needed to have, then here that would have been that I submitted the information that I was required to submit, which is either a copy of the inspection report or um, there you list all the appliances and their make and model. And I don't know the sign in sheet. The easiest thing to do is just upload the inspection response and then you don't have to fill out the whole paper. And then here it says if you were paid. Okay. And, okay. and then this is the payment received when they receive payment for the warranty from the title company. So the two things you have to remember is you have to order the warranty and then you have to submit the invoice for the warranty to the title company, Jay, you'll remember this, so that it actually gets paid at closing. If you don't give that to the title company, they don't know to pay it and then it doesn't get paid and then you got a problem, right, Jay? We don't have that happen anymore. But the check should just come to, it should just show up. Yes, Lau. So um, I'm not sure I used the other day, the one that I closed the house, the uh, American one, but they didn't ask me all about the inspection report or any documentations. They just asked me um, the property address. Yeah, I don't know what warranty company you used. If it was America's Preferred, you, you do have to upload all of that. And that's why you get paid. So you're not getting paid for selling it. You're getting paid for helping them collect the data that they need, right? So you're getting paid for uploading the information we're providing them information on the appliances and the furnace and those kind of things. So Lau, if you use a different home warranty company, I don't know anything about that. What, are you in the South Market Center? Remind me. Are you, you, you so. I can tell you, I don't know about the other market centers, but I can tell you that our managing broker prefers America's preferred home warranty because they cover our liability. That, because of the thing I just told you about. So as long as you get it signed, the, even if they declined, if they declined to get it and they've signed that, right, which is fine. I mean, I, I'm not sure I would buy a home warranty if I was buying a house that had all new appliances and a brand new furnace. I'm not sure I would need a home warranty, right? I would decline it. And then, but the, but the home warranty company would still provide that 
um, coverage, liability coverage for me, the agent. So, and you know what, it, it covers you anyways, right? If they've declined the home warranty, you want to get that in writing from them that you offered it to them and they declined. No different than if you are in a situation right now where they're declining a home uh, inspection, you definitely want that in writing that you definitely recommended that they get it. Here's some statistics they gave us. It came from a NAR, uh, 2021 NAR um, trends report. Um, let's see, 45% of buyers finance are financing right now at least 90% of their home purchase. Why is that surprising or concerning or not maybe not concerning, but worth noting? You think? Mm -hmm. They're probably putting every dime they have down and they don't have any money for repairs. They don't have any money for repairs, right? Because they're they're having to go, they're having to, what are they having to do? They're having to pay over, right? Yeah. They're having to do appraisal gap, right? They're having to do all kinds of things, right? They're not able to ask the sellers to help them with anything. Uh, the other thing for me that this tells me is that because we have probably had buyers that have settled like they may have some buyer's remorse because they ended up having to buy not the perfect home because of the, the way the market has been. They may have a hard time selling a building equity for a minute, right? Building equity over, if they if they finance 90% and what's the cost to sale usually? 10%. Pardon? 10%. 10%, right? So they have no equity. Like they, they couldn't turn around and sell it. And 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 have and have any any um, equity. Sixty six percent of buyers have regrets about the house they purchased. Is that like is, not that, is that increasing? This is a this is all I know is this is the twenty twenty two NAR trend. So I don't know what okay, they yeah. were for the prior. I don't know what they were for before twenty twenty one. But I know sixty six percent of buyers have regrets. I would assume that's very high. I mean, I can't imagine that that's yeah. a normal trend. Um, seven out of 10 homes will have major system failures in the first year. If you represent a buyer, is that an important number to share with them? Do you think that's part of your fiduciary duty to, to let a buyer know that, yeah. hey, I just wanna let you know everything looks really good, but seven out of 10 homes, especially if I know you're cashed out, you probably need to talk about a home warranty, right? $575 and those, those things can be covered, right? $425. Um, okay. Um, so that was, that's all it. That's what I wanted to share on home warranties. Anybody have any questions or anything you want to discuss on that? So where do we yeah. find the page that they would decline? It is, it's on there. It's one of the things that you download. And let me see. I keep them, I have them in my packet, um, but if you order one of these, you can put it, take it to your buyer's presentation and your seller's presentation with you. I'm trying to find the sheet. There's a sheet and at the bottom, there's just a page that they sign. But if you also have them pay for the mechanicals, and it's in their booklet. Uh, if you have them also uh, pay on the home warranty for the mechanicals as well, which puts it in the six hundred. I think it's six forty six. It's six six. I think it's straight up six hundred right now. So oh, right here, right here, Dan, at the bottom of the page, it says waiver. Okay. Okay. So this is the this is the home warranty sheet. Um, it is. For a hundred dollar deductible, it's four hundred twenty-five dollars, and for fifty dollar deductible, it's four hundred sixty dollars. And then if you get the buyer preferred upgrade, um, it is a hundred and forty dollars. So that's what covers everything. So one hundred forty and four sixty is six hundred. So Champel yesterday, I had her put in six hundred because uh, if you're gonna have the seller pay for it, start at six hundred. I mean, yeah. worst case is that they're gonna counter it down. Um, other thing is if you represent the seller and um, they um, at the buyer is asking for a home warranty, uh, always counter back that you're going to order it because you want the home warranty that's going to cover the liability, right? Not all home warranties cover 
the legal liability. Most home warranties only cover the mechanic, you know, the appliances and the mechanicals and the components of the home, right? You want to have the company that's going to cover the, the your liability and your client's liability in a transaction, right? So you and want that. And they pay a lower percentage of like mechanicals. Well, and the other big thing with America's Preferred, just so you know why you're selling it, is that they let you choose your own contractor. You don't have to use their contractors. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another piece. So, um, and if there is a hey, washer Carla? and dryer, yes. Oh, um, I have a buyer right now that um, they are insistent on waiving the inspection. So I, I'm sorry, I hopped in late. Uh, you were talking about uploading inspection reports. So if they waive the inspection, how does that work? Then you're going to fill out a sheet. Okay. So they're so and they're, if they're waiving the inspection, but they're getting a home warranty, then you're going to have a sheet that you have to fill out to provide the home warranty company with all the particulars about the appliances and the mechanicals. If they're waiving the inspection and if they're abs, uh, 109 a million percent, if they're waiving the inspection and if they're waiving the inspection and they don't want a home warranty, if you don't get this signed, you are nuts. And I'm just going to be very clear about that, <coughs> right? Because if they have waived inspection and get it in writing, they buy a house and they have a problem down the road, who are they going to come back after? you i promise it's going to happen so if it always get this signed if they're going to waive it but it but absolutely if they're waiving the inspection make sure you get the sign you should have these in your office you can get them on the website i just I have, thank you i have a folder here and i keep them with my buy i always kept them with my buyer's packet and my seller's packet i take it to both both my listing appointments and my buyer consultations right and cover it right on the very front end and on my buyers, I say, you know, I probably aren't going to know if you're going to want to have a home warranty or not um, until we see the home and we see, I mean, if we've got all brand new appliances, a brand new furnace and a brand new roof. Yeah, we probably don't need a home warranty. Then I'm just going to have you sign this, that you're waiving the home warranty. But at the, at the buyer's consultation, when I'm educating them is when I want to have this conversation, not when we're standing in a house, right? Not when we're making an offer and we're under the, pre, under the gun to get it done. So, so the buyer, that's something I was never, I wasn't quite clear on. So the buyer can purchase the home warranty. It has nothing to do with the seller. If, if the seller, if they choose it, they can buy it, pay for it and have it. Yes. And it can still happen at closing too. Okay. Even if it's not in the purchase agreement, you just have to get the title company. The now if, if then you would, like, Some lenders may make you do an amendment saying that the buyer, if, if it's going to be on the, the, the Alta, some lenders may have you do an amendment just saying that the buyer is going to pay it after the fact. I just recommend doing it after the fact purely for negotiation purposes because you don't know what's going to come up in the inspection. Okay, because like your buyer can close today and then the next, like they can close on Monday and say, you know what, we do want that. Now that we think about it, we do want it. Can they then go on Tuesday and go directly to America's Preferred Home Warranty and get it and buy it? I am going to tell you that that is going to be a warranty. Uh, that's going okay. to be a question for me. I think so, but I would definitely, okay. before, I, before I told my buyer that that's how it was, I would call um, my rep and I would just say, hey, I wanted to ask you a quick question. Okay. Andy, or I'll Andy, text or email. Cindy has told a, a group of agents that you can purchase it after the fact. Even after closing, they can still purchase it. I just, I would just find out what the what the specifics are on that. You could, and Joni, your your rep is Tamala. I don't okay. know if you remember Tamala came on. Yeah, here. she can. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so and she's awesome. I mean, call her, text her, yeah, or just do it online and ask. It, okay. it, whatever, whatever works. Don't miss this part though, because. It, it happens to, I, I will promise you, no matter how good you do at dotting your I's and crossing your T's, at some point in time, you're going to end up in a situation, whether it's of your, your own doing or not, right? We live in a litigious society 
where if somebody's unhappy, they got to find somebody to blame and they know we have insurance, right? They don't think about we have a deductible. They just think we have insurance. So just protect, just protect yourself. Okay. All right. Any, anything else? Any other questions on home warranties or anything you want to? Yes. Since this, um, since yesterday was the first time I did that a purchase agreement and we did opt in to get it. Do, I didn't see where I would put the company name that my buyer would go with. You wouldn't. You're, you put in there that you were going to order it. So the okay. seller doesn't need to know who you're ordering it from. from. They're just going to know that you're the one ordering it. Okay. And if you represent the buyer and they try to counter it out so that they can order it because they probably have a relationship with a different uh, home warranty company and maybe they get paid. Think about it, right? Just make sure for your buyer's sake, you find out what that warranty covers. And if it's a matter, and I don't think you're going to find one cheaper than the 425 that we have, but if it, if it is, if they say they have a $300 warranty or whatever, you might talk to your buyer about, we have such better coverage here. And I don't want to put you, get you in a bad situation with a home. I mean, if you go on and look at home warranty companies, you're going to find people complaining all day long, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they have their own contractors. They send their contractors out. What the contractor's likely to say, no, it doesn't need to be replaced, right? That's what they're going to say because it's in the best interest of their employer. So just say, you know what, if yours costs 300, mine's 425. I, I'll tell you what I would do is if my buyer couldn't pay the, the, the difference between the two, I'm just going to kick in my hundred dollars that I'm going to get for putting the documents in just to make sure my buyer's got good protection. So Okay. I got a question. Yes. Um, I feel like I should know about it. I'm kind of twisted. If I'm taking on a purchase agreement, if I'm taking the house as is, should I mark that on the as is part or put on there buy reserve the right to have an independent inspection and then put the as put the as is addendum attached and all that stuff in the uh addendum part? You're going to mark as is and then as is addendum, but then the as is addendum is going to give you the time frame for having the inspection. So, so if you think, does it um, make it look any better to the other agent if, if I if I click as is or still buy reserve the right to have any independent inspection, but then turn around and the addendum say buyer will accept it as is like that. Does it matter if you think well, it buyers matters if they see it first? Let's not, let's not get mistaken. And Shelly, I don't know how this is in Kentucky. So I want to preface this. But in Indiana, don't get mistaken thinking that the as is and the as is addendum is in the seller's interest. It is not in the seller's interest that you're buying it as is. Because right. what the as is addendum says is that for any undisclosed defect in the home, I can terminate the agreement and get my earnest money back. Sellers get hung up on the fact they want to sell it as is because they don't want to make repairs. Don't call it as is because as is doesn't mean that. If the seller does, if the seller wants to sell without making any repairs, what you're going to do is in the agent to agent comments, you're going to say that the seller is unable to make any repairs, right? Now, if they send us send it back to you with an as is addendum, I would counter out the as is addendum. No, you get an inspection. We're going to go this. We're going to go the normal route. There's no major defect that we know of. Right. So you don't want the as is addendum. They can they can void the They can terminate the contract because of any undisclosed defect. All right, so that's not, if you represent the buyer, you do want the as is addendum because now your buyer can determinate the agreement for any undisclosed defect. So let's say that they go in and there are 45 defects that are not major items, not things that you would normally get your earnest money back, but the sum total of them together is like, man, I don't want this house. Or let's say that there's one defect, it's not that bad, but it's enough for your buyer to say, eh, I don't want this, right? Now you just have your out and you get your earnest money back. So the as is addendum benefits the buyer. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you say um, that line again with the listing? You said sellers do not want to pay anything. Can you say that again? The sellers are unable oh. to, make any, to make any repairs, right? You just say okay. in the agent, agent comments. We're not able to make any repairs. Okay. Happens a lot with estates. I represented a lot of estates. 
the states really don't usually have the ability, they don't have the cash, they don't have the ability to make repairs. Um, and basically that's letting the buyer agent know you're gonna have your inspection. If there's anything major, we're probably gonna be renegotiating, right? Because we can't make repairs. I have another question because this has come up with me uh, with this last one. And um, so you're saying that you can renegotiate after with an as is addendum and after the inspection comes, you can renegotiate and say, we don't want to do it this way. If both parties want to, yes. So what if the seller's like, hey, you already knew and the listing agent is saying, hey, you've signed the as is addendum and they don't want to renegotiate. Well, if it was disclosed, then you can. Listen to what I said a minute ago. The as is addendum says that you can term the buyer can terminate the agreement for any defect that wasn't already that wasn't already um, disclosed. Oh, I lost that word for a minute. That wasn't <laughs> disclosed. So it's an if it's an obvious if it's an obvious defect, it's not latent, right? You could see it when you walked up to the door. This happens a lot with cracks in driveways. I love cracks in driveways. I'm gonna terminate the agreement because there's a crack in the driveway. Really? The crack was in the driveway when you made the offer. Okay, so right. it was closed because it was disclosed. You could, anybody could see it, right? Um, so yeah, that, that doesn't count, but anything. So let's say that um, there's an inspection and there's a crack in the foundation and it wasn't obvious, right? Now I can terminate. Or there was um, not enough, not enough uh, insulation in the attic, right? I couldn't see that when I made the purchase. It's a defect that normally wouldn't allow you to terminate the agreement and get your earnest money back because there's an as is addendum. You can now terminate the agreement and get out. But so, well, if, okay. you, if the seller doesn't want to renegotiate, then that's it, right? Let's say that it's, oh, it's like something like that, like something small for the buyers, but they're like, hey, we saw this in the inspection. We still want the house, but we would like this to be taken care of and renegotiate that. You can't do that. If the seller will. Okay. But if the seller says no, then no. Okay. Does that, does, really it cool. does mean that they're not going to make repair. But sometimes you'll have an as is addendum and you go back and you say that and they go, oh, well, they'll repair it. No problem. I mean, you, you, you know, you don't know. Yes, Miss Annie. I'm sorry, I have a quick unrelated question. Um, so on the purchase agreement, I, you know, I got an offer on uh, my listing and they put in an addendum with the uh, appraisal gap, but they didn't check under further conditions that there was an addendum. Do I need to, do I need to have them correct that? Okay. Say that again. They submitted an appraisal gap on an addendum uh -huh. And then, you know, further in further conditions, they didn't check that there was an addendum. I would just, important? I would just, I would just counter that the purchase agreement and the addendum are being accepted by the buyer or the seller. Okay. Okay. So when, when we accept it, we, we just say clearly, or I have to do a counter actually. I would, well, I think I'd have to counter because I don't know how else you would, well, I guess you're signing both the addendum. You'll be all right. Cause you're bought, you're, you're signing the purchase agreement and the addendum to accept. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Congratulations. That's awesome. Well, it's not for sure yet, but I'm pretty sure we're going to go with that one. So thank you. Love it. Okay. So. All right. So we're all good on 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 warranties, yeah, and as is, we got that covered. All right, now what I wanted to talk about today is allied resources and vendors, okay? So let's talk about how can we, so we were talking about give, it's a good, really good fit with what we've been talking about today. Um, so we we're talking about give, and if we had a book of preferred vendors, I mean, you guys pretty much know I have preferred vendors, right? Because when you need somebody, I usually have somebody I can recommend. Do you know how I got those vendors? By network. Yeah, with networking, right? But, but, but a lot of it was a bold exercise. So I did bold in person. I don't know, four years ago. And one of the exercises in bold was this. And I want, I want to suggest this to you guys. It's really good. So you go through your database. You, right. first of all, you make a list of the vendors you want to have in your book, right? I want to have a CPA. What kind of vendors? Let's make a list right now. What kind of vendors 
would you want to have in your allied resources vendor book? Now think about this two ways. This is who people in your sphere might need access to, might need, okay? And it's also somebody that can send you referrals, right? So we want both going on here. So CPA, what else? Attorney, what yeah. else? Mortgage company. Mortgage company. Inspector. Yeah. Your inspector, yep. Painters. Painters. Plumbers. Remediation, absolutely. Plumbers. Uh, Debbie, Debbie, uh, Debbie Fortman texted me yesterday and wanted to know. Um, let's see. Her question to me was, uh, "Where's a good place to? Who's a good place to contact for carpenter bee treatment?" Exterminators. Exterminator, right? Need a, an exterminator. How about so uh, concrete and foundation people? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. hallelujah. Absolute yes. people. <laughs> uh, inspect, you know, uh, insulation, right? Uh, I'll tell you one that I didn't have on my list that I had to find. Uh, I had a raccoon that decided to move her babies into my attic. You know, I had to have a wildlife person. It took me a whole day to find somebody. Oh, and then because of it, here's one for you. Because of it, uh, they had to cut my ceiling out to get the babies out of the attic. And I didn't know this, but on my ceilings were lath and plaster. Ooh. I had to find plaster repair people, right? Which was not on my list. If I had a realtor that I could have called, which I did, by the way, because I happened to have resources where I found a realtor who had, you know, who could recommend. How about carpet cleaning? How about house cleaning? Right? Yard work? Leaf, leaf removal. Anybody need a leaf removal guy? I got one, right? Those of you that's been in my house, you know why that's funny. <laughs> right now I have about three feet of leaves outside, like all over. <laughs> um, so think about, make a list, okay? Make a list of all these people. Now, what is important about who you have on that list? When you, when you identify now, I need to have a painter. And I need to have a painter. What's important about the painter that I put on that list that I'm going to share with people? Well, first of all, that they do a good job. Absolutely. Uh, second, that they will also give you referrals. That they'll give you referrals. So what is the danger, or not the danger, but what is the downside of putting out on your Facebook resource page at Keller Williams asking for a painter? That they, you'll get somebody who will refer people to a different agent. There's a reason why that agent's referring them to you. They already have that relationship, right? So when I give you got now, you, you don't have this problem necessarily with me because I'm not, I'm not in production, right? So I'm not, I'm not, if they refer to me, I'm going to refer back to you guys. So not, not a big deal, but right. let's say you get all of your resources from me, right? Now, did you create relate? Did, were you able to get referral relationships? No. Now I'll tell you what, anybody I send to you, they're really good about referral relationships because I already vetted them out and they're not sending me business anymore because they know that I'm not in production. So you could probably create a relationship if nobody else is, right? But you want your own. The point of this is you want your own vendors. You want your own allied resources, right? So you have to vet them. You have to find them and vet them. How are you going to find them? <laughs> yeah you can go talk to them how about this how about first quarter when you call your quarterly calls for your sphere you say i'm creating a vendor list and i am looking for a painter and i wanted to know do you know any painters that you've had good experience with right so then you give me your painter then i call him up and say hey i was talking to um one of my one of my um, contacts, my business contacts. I was looking for a painter, and they recommended you. Now, have you made your your spear person that recommended them look like a hero, right? Because they got credit for it, right? Mm -hmm. And now they know that somebody referred. If somebody refers you, are you going to take extra good care of the person, right? Then you say, so here's the interesting thing. I'm a realtor, and I have a 
I'm going to need to refer somebody out a lot, uh, you know, a lot to a painter. It's going to come up a lot. So I wanted to know, would you be interested in being that referral, be in a referral relationship with me? Right. And I'm going to ask this question. I have to ask you another question. Do you have a real estate agent that when you have a client that says they want to sell their home or buy a new one, um, when you have a customer that says that to you, do you have a realtor you already refer to, refer out to? Right. Because we want to know that. Right. They're already referring to their sister who's a realtor. And that probably isn't the painter we want on our list. And what I usually ask then was, well, could I, could I be number two? what would it take for me to be your number one person, right? That, that's how you vet out your, that's how you vet out your vendors. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to challenge all of you in addition to your three things that you're doing, two or three things that you're doing for lead generation. I'm going to challenge you to figure out how you can incorporate that in so that by the end of, let's say the first quarter, you could have a vendor book put together, right? Now you can send that vendor book out to your entire sphere. It's a give, right? Now you've got more people you're going to contact on a regular basis. Because even if you don't have business to send to them, you could call and check in with them. How's your business going? You know, is there anything that you need? You think there's a chance that those vendors might need to buy or sell real estate? Yeah. I think there's a chance that some of those like contractor vendors might get into flipping and be interested in learning about investing in real estate. They're going to have cheap labor, right? They get to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. I see frequently, uh, and we have used some of them on the Facebook group, Housewives of, of Hendricks County. My wife will pick up a name there. It'd be pretty easy probably to go back and search that and, for electrician. That or out. Or I, I love that. Then what happens, right? Now you watch Facebook your internal resource page and somebody says, anybody know a good painter? Well, I just made a relationship with a painter and I want, I want to have a two-way relationship with him. So he's sending me referrals. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to refer him to Sue Smith Realtor. And then I'm going to call the painter and I'm going to say, hey, guess what? I just gave your name to another realtor today. And I wanted to make sure you knew. Um, so if you'd be sure to take care of her just the same way you take care of me, right? And don't forget if you if you come across anybody that you know needs my help, please send them my way. If you give, 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 right? Ask. Anybody have you already started a vendor list? Just naturally, right? Yeah, I have tree service guys. Yeah. Well, where's a good place to start if you own a home? People that have serviced you at your house. Anybody you've already worked with, you already have the beginnings of a relationship. Plus, you know the quality of their services. Jack, those of you guys who have I have sent Jack to, oh, there's your number one thing that you need most, in my opinion, you need most of all is you need a Jack. You need a Jack of all trades. You need a handyman, right? Mm -hmm. My handyman right now is, I can't really refer him out to anybody else right now because my handyman guy is so backed up. He can't do my own work. <laughs> I made a mistake, <laughs> right? I made a mistake because I have over-referred my handyman and now he doesn't have room. He doesn't have time to help me, <laughs> but make sure you have a handyman, you know, find, find yourself a really good handyman because after you close with a buyer, right? You go all a touch point after you check in with them, right? Call, see, how are you? 60, what I tell you, 66% of buyers have regrets. What does that tell you about your buyers? Over half of your buyers are have regrets potentially, statistically, right? One thing they might be regretting is something that you could have a solution for. Would you like to fix that regret? Yeah. Plus, right. if they regret it enough, you, it's another touch for when they get ready to sell that one. <laughs> it is, as long as they don't blame you. Yeah. What if they regret 66% of them blame you and they, re, and they blame their, or 66% have regrets? Who's the most likely person they're going to blame? How can you make sure it's not you? Just help them, right? Give, 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 give. 
Melissa has a good question that I'd mm -hmm. like to know too. What's who's, that? What, who's Allied Resources? Yeah, I don't even know what that means. It's just a referral source, right? It's if they're your they're your partners in crime. That's what allied resources resources mean. So when you when you create your vendor book, what you're looking for is not just not just people. Like you're not just looking for people that you can send people out to. You're looking for relationships. You're looking for two way resources. So allied resources is the word that Gary uses in this book, and also the millionaire real estate investor. That, that that you'll see that in those books. That's the terminology. This isn't just a vendor. This is a vendor that you have a relationship with. They are your ally. They are your partner in crime. Now, how do you get a relationship with a vendor? You talk to them. <laughs> how about give, give, give? This might be my theme for 2021 is this give, give, give. Because I think the more you give, there's a there's a great book. This is a really short book. This would be a great thing to put on. I hadn't thought about this. But this would be a great book to put on your, you can even put this on a vacation reading list or your growth plan. And it's really short and it's written in parable format. So it's really easy to read parable format, meaning it's a story, not like a business book, which tells you bullet points of things to do. Those bullet points are contained in the story. It's called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Um, and it's real short. I think I've given all my copies out. I gave them as a Christmas present two years ago to everyone met uh, Shelly. I gave that as a Christmas gift to everyone I networked with two years ago. And they- Oh, won. nice. It's it, called The Go-Giver? The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Oh, that's cool. Um, so I, I had a good example of this yesterday. We have a neighbor who is uh, having a new driveway put in and they had pavers out. And uh, so uh, I walked by and they made some comments about the Greyhounds and that type of thing. But I took the Greyhounds inside and came back by and I said, hey, do you guys have any business cards? Well, the supervisor on the job is the son of the owner. And, oh, yeah, absolutely. Let me get you those. And uh, so I, you know, made sure I passed along some of my cards. And who do you know that might be interested in buying or selling? He said, well, I don't know. I'm looking at probably renting something different uh, in six or so. So I went into the whole, why would you want to rent and pay somebody else's mortgage payment thing? And uh, ended up getting him with a lender. So we'll see what we ah, do. Yes, I love it. So here's here's the book. This you see. So that Shelly, you'll see why it was a great gift to give because it's like seven or eight bucks for a hardback. I mean, it's a hard, you know, it's a, it's a really nice hardcover. Um, yeah. And it's it's just it's just it's it's just an awesome little book. And I'm and I'm telling you, it's little. I don't know if this tells me how many pages it is, but it is. Oh, there it does. It's 144 pages. So it's it's just a little book. It's not it's not a big monster book. And then they they have there's some other ones that come after it. So the story continues because it's a parable, but I love that. Okay, oh, what I cool. like what I'd like to do is I'd like to practice having a conversation. I'd like to practice having two con there's two conversations around this. And I couldn't find a script to give you. I, I will find the bold script somewhere that from four years ago. I just I was out for two days and I have file cabinets of things and I've got to find the scripts for you. They will be in your script folder eventually, but I can basically tell you what this looks like. And it's just a conversation, right? So when you have the conversation with your client, your, your sphere, it's real simple. I'm building a database of vendors that I can share with people and that I can also use my buyers and sellers can use. So first of all, I wanted to ask you, do you have any contractors that you've worked with in the past, you know, years or, or so that you would recommend to me and see who they recommend, right? Same thing if you're looking for an accountant, an attorney, uh, estate planning, whatever that looks like, right? Whatever your list is that you're working on. And then just say, and, I, and would you like a copy of my vendor book when I get it put together? I'd love to share it with you, right? Now give. I've asked, it's kind of backwards. I've given and asked, but that's okay. But I'm still giving. I'm giving them the opportunity to re refer and that makes them happy because they're helping me and they're helping somebody else. When you call the vendor, the way the conversation goes is that I'm, I'm building a vendor, but I'm a realtor. Right. I come in contact with lots of buyers and sellers and I'm building a list of vendors that I can trust to send my clients to 
And I'm looking for two, I'm going to be honest, I'm looking for a two way street here. I'm looking for a relationship where we can be allied resources for one another. So my first question is, do you, who is your perfect client? Who could I send your way? What kind of work would you like to have? Or do you have any capacity right now for more business? And then my second question is going to be, do you have a realtor that you refer business to already? A preferred realtor that you refer business to already? And if they say yes, say, well, what would it take for me to become your realtor? Or could I at least be number two? So I give them an out, right? If they tell me I'm going to be number two, they're probably not going to go on my list. Unless I can't find anybody else. So would you put more than one vendor of each type in that book? I like to have two. Here's why I like to have two. I like to have two because I like to give people a choice. So that way, if it doesn't work out, it's not completely my fault. Mm -hmm. and, and you guys will see that in everything that you've seen from me. Like my home inspector sheet, I have two home inspectors. I have my favorite and I have another one that's pretty close to my favorite. That way they can choose either one. Plus if they're busy, I wanna give them a choice. Plus now I have two allied resources, right? I have two relationships. Yeah. So the second question I would probably ask them in this, and this is the give, is are you currently hiring and what type of people are you looking for? Ooh, that's fabulous. Oh, that's a good one. Especially really in, good. This, in this environment. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Ooh, that's so good. I love that. Okay. Now the, and the, the other thing that you can share with them is, you know what, a lot of other realtors, you know, need people as well. So I'll be, I'll be sending, you know, them, I can send them your way as well. And then ask now, if I'm going to send you a referral, how would you like that to look? Do you want to text? Do you want, remember, how do we want to communicate? What do you, is there somebody, do you have an appointment setter? You have somebody in your office that I would be my go-to person to refer. How, how would you like that to come to you? So Question here. Um, so for instance, like heating and cooling, uh, we've always used Chapman and had really good luck, but Chapman's a big company and they're not really going to be uh, necessarily that person that's going to refer back to you. Are you better off to get the mom and pop? You, that would be a choice, but is it possible at Chapman that there is a point of contact there? Well, there probably is, but there's probably multiple, so I'm guessing. Well, what if you, I mean, mom and pop is great, but what if you found a way to the top of Chapman and you said, hey, this is what I'm putting together. I'd love to include you guys, but I'm a little concerned because I am looking for an, an allied resource. I'm looking for a relationship here. What would it take in order for me to become the preferred realtor for your company? Could you just ask, yeah, right? It doesn't hurt to ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. Um, Dan. And Carla, my parents just found a great HVAC person in Mooresville and their unit was on back order. And every Friday they called to give them an update. And I thought of Carla, oh, they said, it's not in yet, but um, we'll let you know. They called every week. And my mom was like, that is amazing. And okay. I thought about Carla. Melissa, who should be your first vendor on your vendor list? I should call them. <laughs> You should call them and you should start off with a give. You're going to give a compliment, right? And you're going to say, that's how I do business. And that's the other thing. You have to set expectations with your vendor. So I take customer service very important. So if I refer someone to you, I need to feel confident that they're going to be taken care of, right? I'm going to be asking them for their feedback. And just know that if you can't take care of them, you need to let them know and let me know as well so I can find them someone else because I don't want to have to take you out of the book once I put you on my book, in my book. Yeah. So right now, Jessica Riley's doing this vendor book, right? And she already has set vendors in there and people are doing that with the set vendors in there and they're missing the point of the book, right? The point of having a vendor list, we talked about this a minute ago, there's several reasons to have a vendor book. You have something, you may end up not having a couple of categories where you can't create a relationship. Then by all means, put somebody in there that maybe are, isn't gonna refer you business so that you have everything covered. But the point of this is to create relationships that's gonna be referral sources for you. Now, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna do this, what do you need? What is the first step that you need to do in order to incorporate this into your business? The first thing is set up a smart plan and send an email to everybody who's already on your list. 
I love that. But one step in front of that. You got to put it on your calendar. You have to time block the time to do this, right? So look at your calendar. Is there some time that you can dedicate to working on your vendor book? So you're going to have a goal. I'm going to have a vendor book. I'm going to have it. It's going to be a it's going to be smart. I'm going to have how many vendors identified, how many relationships identified and by when? Am I going to create one relationship a week? You can't do this book in one day. You can't even do this book probably in one week. You know, this is a this is a this is an ongoing project, right? So what does that look like for you? And Shelly, I know you guys have a vendor list for your team, but you mm -hmm. can have a vendor list for you too. I've got a I've got a personal vendor list because it helps it helps because I live just east of Louisville in a smaller town and I've got a great HVAC guy and now he's in my B and I, so we refer back and forth to each other. But yeah, I have a I have a, a list for myself too. You know, um, Carla, I don't know what vendor book Jessica's making, but it would might be a good idea to start with Jessica's book if we don't have any vendors, but then slowly replace the people with the relationships. So you're not kind of starting from scratch. You could do that. Or you could start from if if you if you've not sent a vendor book out to anybody and you send out in April, like you you find time in your calendar and you put this as part of your goals and you have a book ready by April, would it be better to have a good book out in April or because if you do one now and it's not very good, it doesn't have very many good choices in it. And let's say that they call those people and it doesn't work out when you send out the new book in April, how are they going to feel about the new book? They may be not impressed and or distressful. So I would just ask yourself that. Would it be better to get it, to do it, to systematically do it, or just adopt Jessica's and then try to fill in later? I, I don't know the answer to that question, but it's, yeah. it's up to you. I right. didn't mean like send out just because I meant use it for reference. Oh, yes. Like if in the meantime, calls, yes, in I the don't meantime, know anybody. In the meantime, you got your KW resource page, right? And, and I'm not, I, I mean, seriously, I had a vendor book that was very well vetted. I spent a year making my vendor book after this bold thing, right? I spent a year doing this. Oh, and by the way, just so you know, the yellow pages is a really good place to go as well. Like if you call your sphere and they don't have anybody, then, then start calling businesses, right? Have the question, set a goal for yourself. How many businesses am I gonna call every week? And, and, and maybe, uh, you know, my goal was, I can't remember what my goal was, but I think my goal was like four vendors a month to create a relationship of four vendors a month. Cause my, you know, my standards are pretty high. I had to have the conversations. First of all, if I called them and they never called me back, are they gonna go on my list? No, right? So I had a very high standard. Figure out what your standards are. Figure out how many, what your goal is. You gotta, you have to approach this just like everything. You have to set a goal. You have to time block. You have to be systematic about it. And then when you get all the data together, you can either do your vendor book yourself or you can go to Jessica and she's got um, a template, I guess is what she's got to put it all together for you. Um, she had uh, Armand, Lakeisha. Lakeisha, you probably saw Jessica's because uh, at the new event a couple Wednesdays ago, um, she had Dixie Oberlin. She's done one for Dixie. Yes, um, it was really nice. Office. Yes, but Dixie's vetted all those vendors out. Those are her vendors, right? Those are, those are her vendors. Now, don't be afraid if another realtor gets your vendors because guess what? That's just good for you because now you're giving a referral. If you give somebody two or three referrals, do they, you think they feel obligated to give you one back? I would hope so. <laughs> huh, you probably need to re remove them for your list, right? <laughs> um, I worked in the scene. I will tell you this just honestly, transparently. I, I worked in the senior world, right? That's where my business came from. That was my primary source, my primary focus, my specialty. And um, I had... Uh, an, an attorney is an important vendor to have when you work in that environment. And I sent about $5 million worth of business probably to uh, a law firm that never once referred back to me. And I found out they were referring to another realtor. 
I promise you, great law firm, but I promise you that if any of you call me and need an attorney in Indiana um, for seniors, it's not going to be that law firm. I'm going to take, send you to another one because they didn't honor our relationship. And that, that affected my, you know, what I was going to do with them. Same thing as if I sent somebody somewhere and they had a really bad, they had a bad experience and it, and they didn't take the steps necessary to make it right. Like they didn't acknowledge the bad experience and they didn't take the steps to make it right. Then, then that was a no-go for me, but those are my standards. You get to choose what your standards are. All right. The last thing I had on my list that I wanted to cover today and I'm finding it. So Ooh, this is a good one. For, this is another point. This is just something else I wanted to share. Uh, for those of you that are running Facebook ads, there was an agent on the agent panel that ran a Facebook ad that was kind of like, um, she didn't share the ad, but the gist of it was, because it just came up as people were asking her questions. It was, oh, why rent? And then it um, gave a scenario and then it gave bullet points and then it said, want to learn more. And it, she said that it absolutely blew up. Like she had to hire somebody to help field all the leads that she got from it because she couldn't keep up with it. Um, so I know we, we normally think of Facebook ads as running you know, a property as the attraction, but that's the last thing that I wanted to talk about today is look at your lead generation and ask yourself, how are you attracting? What's the difference between prospecting and attracting? The intentionality of it. Intentionality of it. How many of you guys would like somebody to call you and say, come list my house? That's the, difference. <laughs> That's the difference, right? That's the difference between prospecting, can I list your house, and attracting, come list my house. So what can you do to attract? I'll give you one, neighborhood nurtures. In, in, my, past, in my past, I have three come list me's in, that have come to me from my neighborhood nurture. They literally hit reply and said, okay, we're ready. Come list it. Neighborhood nurtures, big one, big, huge one. What else? You have to establish yourself as the expert. Yeah, so every time you put on Facebook, every time you put on Facebook, I have an open house, right? Somebody sees it. They're going to come to you. They're attracted to you, right? Every time you have a listing, just listed, people see that. They want to be just listed. Think about when you look at your three sources of business. How are you attracting? You can't only attract. It would be great if you could, but I don't know what that would look like. You can't only attract, probably. But think about, am I attracting? And what can I add into my system and plan around my lead generation that is attracting? I think Shelly's talking to somebody else, not us. I hope she's not talking to us because she's very animated. And so we're missing something really fabulous. All right. What else can I do to help you guys today? We have any takeaways, anything that you can take with you to work on? Yeah. I've got a question or, or a poll. What would you say would be a good buyer's packet presentation to give people? Like say, if I wanted to get, I'll give a buyer's gift bag, what, what would be a good thing to put in that? A buyer's gift bag. Tell me more about that. Uh, so I'm, I'm wanting to give... Um, as I do the pop-up shops and stuff like that, different things like that, I want to be able to give the buyer, give the person something, um, not too expensive, but something with information in it, something, and something. Just like a, you sent me something like this. So, you know, something that's, uh, that has my name on it, something with information, and it's a trinket or something. What would be a, a good buyer's gift bag? 
Well, my, my best advice on that is to just to use your buyer's guide. So the same buyer's guide that you would use, make it pretty, right? Make it pretty and printed. It's got a dictionary. It's got an, a glossary in it. If, if it's got a glossary of in it, all the terms that we use for us, it lets them know what the process looks like. Um, swag swag is great. Right. Yeah, you could have it. You could print it down small. Okay. You could have it printed down small, right? But I would take that buyer's guide. As a matter of fact, I, I think it was Gene Rivers. I think this came from Gene Rivers. Those of you guys doing open houses, I would absolutely be doing this. Make, get a Q, do the QR code, right? That goes to a landing page that you can set up in your command. Okay. And put it in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in the bedroom that says, would you like a copy of my 2022 buyer's guide? Right. And then they scan the QR code. They put their information in. Guess where it shows up? In your command. In your command. And then you send them out the buyer's guide. And now you started. That was your first give. Yeah. Is that your first give? And you started a relationship. Right. Maybe they're not interested in buying. Maybe they're interested in selling. So somewhere else in the house had asked, would you like to have a copy of my 2022 seller's guide? Guess what? They click on both and they want both. Now, what do you know? What, what, what do you, uh, I missed part of that. What do you, how, whose house are you leaving it in? You're in an open house, right? You're going to have a host of open house. This becomes part of your open house packet. All you're going to do it once, get those little dollar store acrylic frames, right? You know, the, the, you know what I'm talking about? The dollar store acrylic frames and print out a nice page. that has got a QR code on it that goes to a landing page, you know, get your free 2022 buyer's guide, QR code. Get your free 2022 seller's guide, QR code, right? You could even create the top 10 things to know when you sell your house and QR code, right? I know we've gone through it before and there's a site you can go to to create a QR code, but how do you create it? Uh, right uh, right now, I'm going to tell what, you to, one of two things. Go to Jessica Riley. She can do it for you right? Or um, Google how to get a QR code. I, I, I'm going to tell you, this is not my skill set. We do it for the staging company, but my daughter does it. Yeah. Richard Greenfield in the South office is the one that uh, gave the demonstration yeah. on it. In the work, in, exactly. Thank you, Dan. In the workshop videos, if you go down to a workshop video and you see Richard Greenfield QR code, he walks you through exactly how to do it, doesn't he? He even teaches you how to set the landing page up in that video. Armand, I know how to do it super fast too. So you could call me and I can walk you through it. There you go. Okay, so that Jay, that wasn't the answer to your question. But instead of doing a swag bag, you could do the same thing. You could take that, you could take that acrylic sign and put it on your table at your pop-up and they could just scan it. Now you got their information. I have a comment, Jay. Um, there is the magazine for businesses. It's called Uline. If you uh, call them, you can get on Google and just go to Uline and call them and um, have them send you a book. You can kind of look through the book to see what other little things like knickknacks and things like that to put into that. They have all kinds of stuff. I have a friend who does that as her job. She does promo marketing too here in Indy. Um, if you want little like squishy balls with your logo on it, but you kind of got to buy a substantial amount to, you know, you might need a thousand squishy balls. So <laughs> those, and I will tell you, if you go to KW, Jay, those, those keychains, that keychain that you've got there, that came from KW. They're about $5 a piece. Um, yeah, simple, something simple, but, but something that they can walk around with. I was going to get these bags. It was like $80, $80 for some bags. Hang on. Go, hang, I'm just, the, little, the little nylon bags that you get when you walk around a, a convention center. I was just going to Amazon. order some of them. Go to, the dollar store. Go to the dollar store, get these bags, and then print a label or buy a roll of labels from the red store and just put the label on here. Okay. Or you can do ballpoint pens is another one. Pocket nine. There's, <laughs> yeah. People love swag. They absolutely do. But I would give them information, right? I would get the, I would do the little, I, I like the idea of a little book. Yeah. Okay. 
candy you can also do candy right like do, do a candy with a sticker on it or something right magnets magnets are a big deal right lots of people like magnets you can do magnets with um cooking measurements right you can do magnets with sport schedules i always mailed those out um and jay i have a ton of swag i give away at wedding shows that's all logo logoed some um i've done myself and some i've had made for me so if you want to call me later i can tell you like what i've got and how i got it and, and what they like you know, yeah Swag. So I bet you have somebody in B and I. But you have somebody swag. like Melissa. You got somebody in B and I that's selling the swag too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But it's if you if you Google uh, KW the Red Store, I think that's what it's called. I'm googling at the same time. Yeah, alredstore.com. Um. And then there's also KW Red Label. They already have Keller Williams pre-branded things there, so that's one thing to do. But he um, wouldn't be able to get his homes with Hill on there, would he? From that. No, huh? Those would just be I need the swag. I need the yeah. swag. That's what I'm saying. I need that. I'm, a, I'm gonna ask my friend. How I'm just gonna tell you: be careful what you spend. We want to make sure we play red light, green light. And if you're gonna spend money, make sure you make money. So hey, put can only. I, <laughs> yep. <laughs> limit limit how many pieces of advertising material that you have to buy to put in your bag. What I was I was thinking is gonna be. 20 vendors there so i'm thinking like 50 so i give one to each vendor and then another 30 just in case for people who come through and from there hey carla can i add one thing yeah. um when we were talking about making our um two-way relationships so my phone just rang a little bit ago and it was my hvac friend that i was just speaking of and he has a new dispatcher and he's trying to find her somewhere to live her and her daughter and did I know anybody and um so we had a quick little conversation and I'm going to try to see if I can help him so um and it's not a, a money-making thing it's a helping thing so if you've got people like that that you work with he's a great HVAC guy and if I needed something on the fly for somebody I know he'd come through for me so if you can find those people get them in your life they're great I love that. Yeah. So here, here's something, Jay, that's really cool. I've seen before and I just found it at the red store, but you could get them maybe made with your own. What I oh, like yeah. about these is if they like them or iPad or a pop socket, they give you something they can put on the back of their phone, then they're always going to have it. And anybody sees it, they're going to see like any, I have people ask me all the time, oh, are you a Keller Williams? Just because they see the back of my phone because I have a pop socket on here that's KW. Um, the other thing I want, I never did this. This is something I always wanted to figure out how to make it work for me. And I just couldn't make it work. They have KW keys. Oh. And so what you have to have the time to, or have the, the, the system around is getting the key out of your buyer's lockbox and going, getting a key made. So at closing, you give them a key that is a KW key. I just could never get the system down to do it, but I thought that would be so cool to give them a key that was a KW key to their house. Yes, Armand. I know what, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of her name right now, agent with uh, the North office, Keller Williams, uh, but she does a key and attaches it to a, um, uh, a thumb drive. And the thumb drive has all the closing documents on it. Oh. And she gives uh, that she loads the closing documents to the uh, thumb drive and she buys the thumb drives that have a little chain and connects it to the key, the key to your yeah. uh, new life. I love that. I just could never Cute. make it work, but I just got to throw that out there. Somebody can make well, it work and I'll be fine. Carla has the key. Yeah. I know that's why I needed to do it, but I just could never make it happen. And I just now I now I now I have a different key. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys have an amazing oh next week, just so you know, next week we have a much shorter week, right? So um we'll have an open office out we'll have regular group coaching on tuesday we'll have all of, we'll have monday tuesday wednesday for those of you in the 12 weeks we will have monday tuesday wednesday huddle um and script practice we will not have thursday friday huddle okay and we are not having a workshop next saturday so 
um, we are just gonna, all of us are gonna enjoy our Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and then we'll be back on regular schedule. The first week of December, is that not insane? So what are your thoughts on an open house this coming weekend? My thoughts on an open house is yes. And here's why, maybe nobody will come, I don't know. But you don't know, right? You don't know. There are people that don't wanna have an open, that don't wanna go to open houses. There might be people that that's, this is the perfect weekend for them to go to open houses. So I say, yes, put lots of signs out, right? Put, put lots and lots of signs out. I tell you what, I might even consider a Black Friday open house, something different, something, you know, you've been standing in line all day, stop by. You know, I, I might I might do something fun like that and even consider a Black Friday open house. Um, uh, but I don't think there's, some people will say not to do it on a holiday weekend. I don't know that I ever did Thanksgiving because my family plans never worked out for that. But uh, I did other holiday weekends. I did crappy weather. I did, we had snow and people, snow, and the people come in droves. I don't know. Then other days are beautiful and you think people are going to come and nobody comes. Um, I did 4th of July weekend one year and had all kinds of people come. I did trick or treat once for an open house and had all kinds of people. So I just say, yes, it's all about how you market it. That's, that's a cool thought. Black Friday? No, but you can get, you can get decorative signs like Halloween. Balloons. Can you imagine four or five things in the uh, yard? They're, they're cheap signs or whatever, but uh, you buy them and stick them in the yard. Uh, don't you think that that would be attractive to the to the uh, buyers? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you what happened the year that I did the trick or treat for open houses. I had full size candy bars, and the kids were the best advertising ever because they. <laughs> The Keller Williams lady has full size candy bars. <laughs> and get something they like, like uh, probably the most popular is uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. All right, guys, have a fabulous Bye. weekend. If you need anything, text me. Oh, okay. and Melissa, are you still here? Mm -mm. No, okay, I'm a texter. All right. Bye, guys.